What's going on guys? So I'm on my way to the gym right now to start phase two of this workout program. So I'm gonna be doing some deadlifts, some other new exercises you guys haven't seen yet, but I'm almost there, so I'll see you guys in the gym. Alright, so I just finished up with those deadlifts. That last set of 375 was a little rough. I arched my back on the last rep, but still ended up getting the three reps there with 375, so that felt good. A little bit challenging, a little rough, but I still got it. But now I'm gonna move into the hops in place, and then after that is the five times of failure handstand walks. So that's actually how far you can walk on a handstand until failure, so I'm gonna do those two exercises right now. So I mistakenly said right there that the handstands five times until failure in this program were supposed to be handstand walks, but handstand walks aren't actually until the most challenging phase, which would be when you've already practiced with the wall handstands and you've worked up to being able to actually hold a handstand, that's when the handstand walks are incorporated. So that's not until the most challenging phase, but in this one, it's just how long you can actually hold a handstand against the wall. So that's in this part of the uh, part of the program. But right here, what I wanna talk about with the hops in place are, I've actually been adding some variation to these and not making them so much hops in place, um, but more as hops all around. So I'm just kind of moving in a zigzag type of pattern, moving at different angles instead of just side to side or front to back, just to, again, add some variation and it actually helps kind of get through the full minute without having to stop because I was noticing before I'd have to stop around 45 50 seconds and even if I didn't stop it would just there would, it would be it would be burning a lot but I noticed that adding some different angles and different variation to this that actually helps get get through the full minute and I think it's just good to move in different directions in general but now I'm going to move into the handstand holds all right, my phone's gonna be recording, so I have no idea how long this is gonna be, but here we go. Now with the handstand holds, I wanted to start off by saying with these, um, especially in this part of the program, if you're doing it for the five times until failure, is that to, if you're using your phone or if you're using some type of timer, to actually put that to the side where you can't see it. And I mean, doing this, I can't actually see how long um, or how much time has passed, but if you guys are doing it and you, you do have access to be able to see how long it's been I still recommend kind of putting it to the side so you're not thinking about how much time is actually passing but you're more or less just focusing on doing the hold as long as possible and working to just get stronger with the movement and not actually think about um, how long you've been holding the move how long you've been holding the handstand for so with this with this handstand I left the full time or I left the entire time that I did this on the screen but I ended up it ended up being about a minute and 50 seconds uh, when I went to go look at my phone and how long this was recording for so next time I'm definitely gonna go for more somewhere closer to two minutes and I think I think I've gotten two minutes before just trying it uh, aside from working out but yeah, if you guys are doing these, again, just kind of put your phone to the side. Don't don't think about how long it's actually passed, but just focus on actually holding the handstand, getting stronger with it, focusing on your breathing techniques, um, 
your your core strength, your legs, uh, keeping tension in your legs and your arms, and just really focusing on getting better with the handstand itself rather than thinking about how long you've been holding it for. All right, so I just finished up with the wall handstands and the hops in place. Now, like I said, don't focus on how long you can necessarily get the five times until failure, but more or less just focus on that you're pushing yourself with each each set of the five. So that's why I said like just kind of put your phone to the side so you're not worried about how long you're actually doing it, but that you're actually focusing on the exercise itself and getting better with it throughout each set. So that's it for those. I'm gonna go do the sprints now, back to the commentary. As I was doing these sprints, one of my friends was actually on the court right next to me, as you can't see, but he ended up joining in, so you guys will see that clip of us uh, doing these sprints. But if you guys do have a friend or somebody that you know you guys go to the gym with or want that wants to go to the gym, I think it makes I mean, it makes these exercises and doing the workout a lot more fun, just because it adds like a competitiveness to the workout and to the exercises, especially with sprints. I noticed that when, as you guys will see, I noticed that when we both sprinted at the same time that I sprinted faster than any of these where I was sprinting by myself. So finished up doing these 10 sprints and then after the sprints I went back to the racquetball room and then finished off with the single leg squat holds against the wall which were very hard because they had the extra 10 second hold and also added the wall aspect to it just to kind of help me push through some mobility weaknesses that I have, especially with sitting back and staying upright uh, as I'm actually doing the movement. So doing those single leg squats against the wall, it can help if you guys are new to single leg squats or if you've never done single leg squats, or if you feel like you really can't get the form down yet, it really helps if you have kind of difficulties with sitting back in your heels and kind of keeping your, your back upright. That's why I'm incorporating these so um, I can work on my mobility weaknesses and just get stronger and stay more in line during the whole movement. But I'm gonna finish these up and move into the explosive push-ups. Now I wanted to add this because my left leg is my weaker leg and as you guys can see I was not able to control this as well as my right leg and you can see the arc in my back right here so I wasn't able to sit stay as, as upright as I was with my right and I also had to press against the wall to actually press up with my left leg so I'm gonna take some work um, but it's, it's gonna feel good to get stronger with these as I move through this phase. Alright so I just finished up with the single leg squats and I'm gonna keep the camera going so you guys can see a superset of the last two exercises which are the explosive push-ups and the ab walkouts. So I'll put this here Alright, so that's what a super set of those would look like. It would probably help to get a mat or something that your feet wouldn't slide on to kind of keep your feet planted a little bit better. But that's what the failure is. So as many walkouts as you can get, those are really challenging. So try to go as low as possible with those. But that's gonna be it for this first day of the more challenging phase workout. And I'll see you guys in the dunk session. But first, a uh, summary of how the day one workout went. So this is the day after that first workout of phase two and my legs are feeling pretty sore. Those 10 second hold single leg squats 
uh, were really challenging. I definitely feel it today, but overall it was definitely more challenging than phase one. The exercises were a little bit harder, so I'm expecting it to continue to, to get harder as these workouts progress with phase two, but overall I feel good, and I'll see you guys in the dunk session. All right, so I just got done warming up. I did a little bit more than what you guys saw in that clip, but I'm gonna start doing some light jumps now and then dunk. So far, this feels like one of those days where I have lower energy than I'd want going into a dunk session, but sometimes those turn out to be the best days. All right, so many talk about why I'm gonna cut this one short today. If you guys have, if you guys experience a day like this where you feel like you're moving slow and you've been working out and you've been jumping a lot and you feel like you should be, you know, jumping high when you expect to be jumping high, then you know it's not a bad thing to have a day like this and a day where you know you have to stop jumping or cut 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 a dunk session sh uh, short or cut a workout short or something like that to allow your body to recover because. I think in the end it's it's more important to let your body recover and you know get get to more of an optimal point when you when you're going to jump or when you're going to dunk or when you're going to lift again than to continue to push it when you feel like that your body hasn't even recovered from the previous session or the previous workout. Now, I know with the 4 days in this program, it's kind of laid out where you you might seem like it's a lot of volume or it's a lot in, in in a week to do four days of workouts and jump in the same week but again if you guys feel like you need to spread it out or if you need to feel if you feel like you need to add an extra recovery day or something like that then just add it in you know go along with how your body's feeling and how your body's adapting to the to the workouts or to jumping or dunking or whatever it is that you're doing because again I think it's more important to allow your body to recover get stronger get to a more optimal point so that way when you go to perform that skill again or when you go to lift again you know you're actually stronger and you're actually seeing progress made from the previous um, from the previous time that you either lifted or dunked or whatever it is that you did so that's why I'm cutting this short I just don't want to you know I don't want to break down muscle that I feel like is already broken down and hasn't had time to rebuild or get stronger or heal so yeah I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut it here again um, another thing I think it's just a good I think as you as you jump more and as you you know if you're just starting off with lifting or something like that I think you really start to learn your body and when something feels off or when you feel like you just need more recovery time or sleep or some or, or just just more time to let your body heal and today it was just that my timing was off and I didn't feel like I was exploding when I wanted to I felt like it was almost like a little delay before or there was a little delay in when I wanted to take off compared to when I actually got off the ground so that's why I didn't even end up continuing with this dunk session because I just felt like it would almost it would almost lead to more breakdown and possible injury than any progress made so that's why I decided to cut it here and add this little talk in but that's going to be it for this video thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one